16. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had not been no rain that because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did it many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither the cruise of oil fell, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Amen. 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 I'll read also Amos 8, 11. Amos 8, 11. It's a familiar scripture again. It says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. And also Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, it says this, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Could you just uh, go to the next verse, my brother? Just uh, this next verse of the same. Amen. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Next. Amen. Praise God. My mind is telling me there is more. <laughs> May God bless you. Amen. Brother Sunga, nice seeing you. Amen. And Brother Olivia, and I sing you too. May God bless you. You're highly welcome in the house of God. Uh, we missed you a lot, but uh, 
it was for a good cause. So uh, it's a pleasure seeing you in the house of God. Uh, it's a few minutes to eight, and uh, I know some of you are going to work, so we just want to uh, just highlight a few things before we can take part in the Lord's table. And also, as I told you, I'll be traveling to North Dakota tomorrow in the morning. And I'll be there on Sunday sharing with the brethren over there. Then I'll come back on Monday. So I request that you commit me in the hands of God and just uh, uh, pray for me. Amen. Amen. We can't do without your prayers. Amen. And I believe prayers are not just mere words. I believe when you pray, you are talking to God. And God hears what you are saying and he answers those prayers. Amen. Brebranam said he was successful in his ministry because he had men and women who would even go pray and fast uh, just praying for him. And that was the success of his ministry. As I always tell you, we wholly covet your prayers and we depend on your support and your prayers as we keep pushing on uh, as we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I shared with you a few things and I just want to uh, highlight a few things uh, before we uh, take part in the Lord's table. And I was talking about spiritual meal in due season. Uh, spiritual meal in due season. And uh, uh, this age is a great age. And uh, it is also one of uh, the most dangerous times that uh, anybody can also be. I'm talking about the age. And um, it is just because of what is happening around and the way men and women treat or look at the things of God. And at the same time, just as the way we've looked into the scriptures here, where the Bible says there is going to be famine in the land. And uh, it is not going to be famine of uh, bread or to drink and all that, but there is going to be famine of hearing the words of the Lord. And it is interesting in the sense that uh, if there has been any age where we have had a lot of materials being printed out and a lot of information right out there, uh, messages in whichever format and all that, uh, MP3s, uh, tapes, Christian radio stations, uh, printed literature, and so forth. There is so much out there. And I told you that uh, this age is uh, peculiar in the sense that um, uh, this is the time. We've never had a day like this when the Bible has been translated into so many even local languages. Oh, yes. In languages, you know, recently, the brand from Haiti used to use uh, uh, the, 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 the French version of the Bible, but now they have the Creole Bible. Uh, I have one I was trying to figure out how to read it, but I think I need some assistance. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, so every little language now, they're having the Bible uh, in their language. And um, uh, there is a lot of preaching being done than ever. Then you wonder why, why do we have, why is the condition like this? where it looks that so much preaching is being done. There's a lot of information there. If you go to any uh, Bible store around, you see so many books. You go to Salvation and you see so many books on religion, on any subject. But then now, uh, how come it looks like uh, uh, the word of God is not really there? And remember, uh, if you look at, you know, if you look at the Greek word, we have the rima, word and logos. Now, logos is simply the thought behind the rima. 
And uh, just like the way as I speak like this, what you are hearing, you are hearing a rima word I'm speaking, and you are hearing the words I'm speaking. But you see, it is interesting in the sense that we are both, or we are all of us hearing differently. You see, if I ask you, what did you hear? You tell me something so different. And if I ask the other person, they will tell you me also something so different. You see? But yet it was just one person standing here and speaking. So now you'll find out that as I speak like this, you are hearing the Rima word that I'm speaking. But now, if you have the Spirit of God, you are also going to have or to hear another hearing, which is the Logos. And the Logos is simply the thought behind the Rima. You know, so uh, when people had, brethren, they had uh, the rima of the man. But remember, in there we also have the thoughts of God. So now people would say, oh, had they said this, had this was said and all that. But you see, uh, if you go to that person and say, did you say this? Like Brabrandam said, you know, there was some people were saying that uh, we had you said on the top that we have to move to sell all we have and move, come down this side. He said, I never said anything like that. You just got the whole thing wrong. Just be where you are and love the Lord Jesus Christ from the bottom of your heart. And, uh, you know, uh, my sister sang a song, We Will Meet in Christ. This, that's our gathering place. It's not any geographical location, but it is in Christ. So we need to pray that God may give us his spirit. And when we have his spirit, then we can catch the logos. Or, uh, you know, not just simply the words, but you can get the meaning behind the words you are hearing. You know, just like, for instance, if I may give you an example, maybe this will help explain what I'm saying. When Jesus walked the earth about 2,000 years ago, there were many things Jesus said. For instance, he said that uh, he was going to destroy, destroy this temple and in three days build it up. See that? Amen. Now, in the time we are living in, you can say, oh, I know what he meant because there has been a lot of explanation given on that. But if you are there, you would have a problem. Amen. See that? Amen. And you remember when Jesus was arrested, we had this man coming up and saying, you know, uh, we have evidence that this man should be crucified. And uh, they asked them, okay, what do you have to say? And they said, we just heard, maybe touching their ears, both ears, saying, I heard with my two ears, he said he's going to destroy the house of God. And build it up in three days, and they've been building this temple for years. He said that I heard with my two ears. See that? But Jesus was talking about the flesh his body, which was the dwelling place of God. Amen. You see that? Amen. So we have such kind of things where, you know, I told you some time back, you know, I was uh, uh, preaching somewhere and there was another little girl. Uh, when this little girl went home sad and said, today, Brother Ken was not nice because he said you have to cut, you know, you have to remove your right eye and you are cut you, you cut your right hand and your leg, right leg and all that. So, you know, it's like, that's what they said, you know. But the thing is, oh yeah, she was just a little girl. So that's the way, you know, at that age, you can understand things like that. But actually what Jesus Christ said, if you look into the scripture, there is nowhere in the church history or where the disciples ever practiced that. So that means, meaning chopping parts of the body. So that means there is another understanding or a, an explanation, or there is a, a meaning behind what Jesus was saying. You see that? And, uh, you know, the right hand simply means, you know, the things that you lean on, the things that you appreciate, the things that you cherish so much, you get rid of those things. You know, by cutting your hand, that does not mean that you'll be saved or not. You know, it's not going to help you. So it is really just getting rid of the things that you cherish so much. 
but they become a stumbling to your Christian walk with God. So uh, may God help us that we may be able to catch the logos. So to catch, you know, uh, I'm thinking of this scripture. Uh, Paul talked about this. You know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So now he did not just say faith comes by hearing the word of God. If you watch that, two hearings there. Amen. You see that? Amen. And of course, you're going to hear the rima. But the next hearing is Revelation Logos thought behind the Rima. See that? So this is what saves you. Once you get the revelation of the word of God, this is what changes you. This is what makes you not to be the person you used to be because there is something that has happened to you, not just on the intellectual level, but it goes right down into your soul. Praise God. And that's the reason why knowing God is not really knowing him by your cognitive ability, but it is revelation. It's right down in the soul. And once you know him right down, when that faith, when the word can drop right into the fatal hearts of your soul, you know, the, you know to go right down into uh, your heart. Then is when you can now begin to experience the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you can say, I'm not the person I used to be because you know something happened. And there are not enough devils in hell to shake you off from what you stand on. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So now this is the time. So it is a glorious time. And on the other hand, especially for the sinner or the unbeliever, it is a dangerous time. And this is the reason why Paul uses the word perilous. And perilous, it simply means great times of distress. Hard moments to deal with. You see that? And you can look at this spiritually and also even physically you can see what is happening around us Amen. where a man will walk you heard of the man who you know in las vegas with so many guns you see that but that's not now that's just on the physical side so we are not really looking at the physical things we want to look at uh, the spiritual side but you can see you know a man walking with a gun and just to a school, kill children and do things like that. But you see, when Paul was talking about perilous times, he was not looking so much to those things that happen, but he was looking at, if you look at the examples, he said, for men shall love themselves more than loving God. He was not really, yeah, these are perilous things people are doing. But you see, the most dangerous thing is not really somebody walking and shooting mm -hmm. with a gun. Mm -hmm. The most dangerous thing mm -hmm. is for you to die mm -hmm. without knowing Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. Amen. Because one way or another, as we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, some of us might go via the grave. Amen. Oh, yes. So death is not really the big deal. Mm -hmm. The big deal is you not knowing God. Amen. That's perilous. Amen. You're loving yourself more than you love God. Paul says that's perilous. Amen. Just think about that. Liking pleasure more than the things of God. Paul says that's perilous. Amen. He was not really saying, you know, there is, a, there is a storm that came and uh, wiped, like what happened in Puerto Rico, just wiped so many buildings and people. That's, those are not the things he was really looking at, no. Because you can be wiped, but just in a moment of a time, you are in a place you are saying, wow, I wish I came here it's sooner than that. You see, because you are in the hands of Jesus. You see that? Amen. 
That's why Jesus said, do not fear them or him that can destroy you. Fear him that can destroy the body and the soul. Amen. Not just the body. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm not trying to lighten death. No, that's what I'm trying to say. But I'm saying is, what I'm saying is this. It is a serious thing for any one of us to leave this dimension when you know that your life is not right with God. That's a serious thing. Oh, yes. Because when you wake up or when you open your eyes, you will be in great shock. Because, you see, the prophet of God said this, that who places people go to when they leave, when you die, now I'm not, I'm not talking about Evergreen Cemetery. You say, oh, but we all got to be buried there. That's not what I'm talking about. You see, I'm not talking about where they put the body. Because remember, inside that body, when we say dust to dust, we are not talking about the spirit or the soul. We are just talking about the, soul, where the body. The body is going there, but you are not there you are somewhere else. Amen. You see that? Amen. The body is there. It's the dust of the earth. It's going back to the dust of the earth. Amen. But you yourself, you're not there. Right. You have people say, oh, we found his body. Oh, you found his body, but where is he? They only found the body. This is just like a tent or a cot or something you just wear, but you shed it off. See that? Amen. So there are two places. Now, we, you will either go in the sixth dimension or in the presence of God or you go to another waiting station which Brabranham says the fifth dimension. Hmm. Hell. It's a place of torment but it's not burning yet. Mm -hmm. <coughs> See that? Amen. Now, he said this. You know, you hear a lot of people say, I have a lot of problems and all that. You, you are talking about problems? He says, you know, right there in the fifth dimension is a million times worse than what you are saying problems here right now. What you are going through, this is nothing. And right in there, every moment, they are regretting. Every moment. Brabranham says, if you just open the lid, they won't even wait for the preacher to call an order call. They'll be right there saying, pray for me. I want to get right with God. Amen. But you learn your days on earth are over. I told you some time back, and let me repeat this. Every time you wake up, is another day of grace for you. Amen. Why? Amen. Because you can get right with God Amen. that very moment. Amen. Amen. Don't play with this life. This is God's gift. He gave it to us. So let's make sure we use it right. See that? So there are Moments, bad, terrible moments. And uh, in spite of all that, we see there is a promise in the word that God will send Elijah the prophet before that dreadful day comes. There is something that is going to happen now. Uh, I've read different books and uh, different theologians and uh, many people have speculated what this means. Uh, recently I was listening to those of you who come from uh, Ghana, this bishop called Duncan. Uh, to him, his interpretation is that uh, uh, the spirit of Elijah will fall on everybody. You know, just men and women. So that's the spirit of Elijah falling on everybody. But he rejects that there is going to be one man in the hands of God 
with the spirit of Elijah. Now, most of you know Alexander Dewey. He was a great man of God. But you see, Alexander Dewey, not knowing, not having the revelation of this scripture, he began to say, I am that Elijah. I am the one. But if you ask Alexander Dewey, who told you you are the one? You see that? Because you see, unless God comes down to identify you in the scriptures, to help you, lead you, and tell you, this is you. It has to be a revelation from God. Amen. You had Will Brastif. You know what? He preached a good message to those ones who are not there. I think we'll make a tape for you so you can listen to what Brother Stephen shared with us on uh, finding your place in the scripture. So we've had a lot of people. Most of you have heard of this man, Sanyamu.